Hey guys, Chris here at PTTT 120. Today we're going to have a little look at uh, a 3D printed um, uh, 060 tank um, loco. Uh, it's the Fowler 2F dock shunter. Uh, this is uh, really this is produced by Peter at Willington Dean Railway Modelling. Sorry for looking at the notes. Just want to get it right. Now I first come across this uh, when uh, Gary Hall posted uh, that he'd done this uh, and showed it running around. Um, now, the reason for me doing this video is I want to show uh, the newbies to this channel, or, or to the newbies to the scale, should I say, how simple it is to get yourself a little shunter going. So all those are bemoaning not having an LMS shunter, because the J50 is obviously predominantly the LMER, um, this gives you an option, okay? And um, it's very, very easy to do. In fact, how I'm breaking the video down is, is this video will be in two sections. The first section will show you how to fit one of these without having any effect on the warranty. Okay, so you can fit the, fit the loco, see if you like it, see if you like what it does, and then you can take it a step further, be that removing detail, changing the detail, um, or in fact, the second section, Fitting HM7000, 8 pin decoder, power bank, and the sugar cube. Okay. Um, the third section, which will be the model making and decorating and finishing off of this loco, won't happen uh, for a few weeks. I've got a few bits and bats I need uh, to, uh, to come in for me to do that. Uh, plus, also, I haven't got the time really. So, that's going to be two or three weeks away, that one. But at least this one gets you going, gets you going in the right direction, hopefully. Um, Let's get into the video. And here it is, the little Fowler 2F, uh, sometimes known as a dock shunter. That's predominantly where it worked. Um, it comes with a little uh, goodie bag. Let me show you the detail. The detail is actually pretty good, actually. The um, It's hard to, it's, there's always a compromise, isn't there, when it comes to 3D printing, but I think this is a good compromise. There's some nice details here. And, um, it's got the lugs that fit into the same lugs uh, on the 08 chassis. Comes a little goodie bag. Um, these are the, um, the side pistons now and the steps. Now, they're a bit of dressing. They're obviously they're not operable. But um, it's a nice compromise, I think. Okay. And the next thing you need is an 08. Preferably a DB. Maybe a GBRF. Never a blue. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Use what you like, but um, there's less of the blues out there. So, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's put some sponge down, because I the idea of this is to show you what to do without making any damage to an 08. We're not going to need many tools. Little sanding blocks, some tweezers, and a small screwdriver. Uh, we're also going to need a soldering iron, um, but that's just for one little thing, one little solder. First job. You need to get these um, these screws that are in these corners. So we'll have a little look at the instructions. So if you look at figure seven and figure six, um, you can see those little screws just need to come out and then figure eight, it shows you that they pull off. Something we won't be doing is taking any of this detail work off at this stage. That's for, <coughs> that's for, that's for the other version. This one, keep everything simple. Um, when, you pull, when you pull the part, make sure you do not squeeze that, that yellow, um, the link rail, okay, because that's quite delicate. There you go, off it comes. Now, some of this stuff here isn't actually needed, um, and obviously that's, we want to keep it compatible for six pin in this mode, but you have one lead that goes through that housing for the six pin <coughs> blanker or decoder. Uh, and you see the quick whip through the, with the solder to unsolder that tab, and then we're just going to quickly solder it back. Now, don't worry, this bridging piece that holds the motor has one screw. Take that off. And make sure the motor's sat back where it's supposed to go. The body of this um, lo new loco will hold that motor in place. Um, now, I'm doing my soldering off page because I need to look down on it, and my head was just filling the camera shot. Okay, right, so that's all done. Uh, everything's ready to go. 
So we've, we've soldered it back on. Um, you just need to do a little bit of sanding, get rid of some of the little um, 3D printing nipples on the bottom of the, the bodywork. And make sure everything's nice and clean and straight. Uh, now, what's different about this is you're going to need to uh, turn it around um, 100, uh, 180 degrees in a second. There you go. You'll see from the back of this that you've got two sets of screw holes that are wider apart at the back. So that goes to the front of what was the 08. And then you just need to sort of um, clip them into place very carefully. But a lot to pay a lot of attention to what you're actually physically pressing on. Get them all lined up, put them down on a bit of foam mat. There you go. That sits nicely. Obviously these are 08 details. You can remove them, but um, they're a bit of a risky thing to remove without damaging them. And if at this point you just want to see whether or not you like the idea of the loco, keep it simple. So we'll rattle the four screws back in. Tum -tum -tum. It's all about the car in the background. And there you go. That's it. It's done. How easy was that? All you've got to do is do is spray it black and stick some, stick some decals on it. Ta-da! Now then, the main event, part two, DCC HM7000 fitting with power bank and with, and with a, a um, sugar cube. So what have we got to get in here? Well, we've got to get the sugar cube in there for starters. There's a big old 8-pin uh, HM7000 chip. And I thought I'd first of all have a look at the AE models for the DCC Concepts selling the, the power bank, which is compatible with HM7000, just to see whether or not um, it works. Um, we've got a few bits and bats we need to have a little look at. Uh, obviously, we're going to be removing all the 6-pin um, stuff because we're going to be hardwiring. Um, the first job is, well, let's have a little, we'll have a little ponder, shall we? Well, we know width-wise we've got no problems with getting that speaker in there. But really, I think what's going to be more relevant, or certainly for me, is whether or not we can get a um, the power bank in. Um, have a little, we'll have a little nose around, first of all. I'd just like to show you my thinking. Um, we know that we, we've got space to hold that motor down. Um, so forget about those wires for a moment, we'll put them to one side. Uh, there's a lot of space this end. There's that big lump as well of weight which we need to remove. I think that'll help us. Yeah, if we lose that lump of weight, I think we can put the speaker lower down underneath the boiler. Uh, yeah. The um, yeah, because the speaker will fit in quite nicely, just in that bit there. So I'm thinking, if we have the speaker there, the speaker box, we'll take some measurements, see what I need to clear. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see it through the side, but I don't think that's so bad. That big metal lump there needs to go. We can always add some lead later if need be. Right, let's see um, if there's a place for this power bank. Now, I was thinking, do we go in there and dribble out some of that um, coal hopper at the back and fit it in? But it's maybe a little bit too wide. Um, and a little bit too tall, so if we do do it, it's just going to live in the cab, and it's not ideal. Um, I want to be able to see, I wanted to have a character leaning out of the cab at some point, so I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Uh, let's get that out of there, and let's try, I think we should try Hornby's own one, let's see. Um, it's probably a little bit fat with all that shrink on, so we might have to trim that off. Yeah, it won't quite, quite go in. It looks like it wants to, but I think we need to trim it. 
Okay, so here's one I trimmed earlier. Now we'll, we'll wrap this again, obviously, with uh, some insulation tape. But let's just see if that slides in. Yeah, that fits in the boiler perfectly. Might need to go a bit further forward. I might have a look at that. We'll take some measurements. But I think yeah, we can put that there. And then where's the sugar cube and mounting sandwich? Let's see if that goes in. Oops, but the fingers. Right. There's a the sound box. And we can have the speaker facing, although I'm doing it like that, the speaker will be facing down. That won't be stuck like that. Now it looks like we need to find an extra millimetre or two. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Hmm. I think there's some material that can come off of um, inside of here, inside of the actual, the bottom of the boiler. Yeah, I think we can take a little bit off of here, both sides, that loses about a mil, and then perhaps we can probably take a little bit out of the actual sound box itself. The plastic's quite thick, we might be able to remove some from there. Let's have a look at it. Next thing I want to have a look at is where we're we going to get the HM7000 decoder to go. Now it's the same, it's about a millimetre less than the height of the tank. Hmm. But where we've got to think about where we're going to plug in the, the, the everything. So let's have a little look at the thickness. So it's four and a half mil wide, that tank. <coughs> the decoder is just over four and a half mil wide. <laughs> so we've got to find some material from somewhere. Right. Hopefully, we're going to try to find a millimetre would be good. So where are we going to find that? Obviously not in not in there. Um, I know. Let's just check. Let's check this to see if there's more space in the tank. No, nope. there's about 0.1 of a mil space. So if we're going to lose anything off anywhere, we're going to have to take it off this motor mount, aren't we? Maybe sand down one of the side walls. Looks like it's about a millimetre and a half, so maybe we could take a mill off of that. So that we can fit it in there. And then perhaps dress the outside of that with a thin sheet of brass or something. I think, yeah, that's the plan. Right, let's see if we've got anything in the scrap box. Yep, sort of thing I'm thinking of. So we'll just remove that and add a thin skin. Yeah, that works for me. I'm going to go with that. Right, so now we need to sort of work out what we're going to cut off and where we're going to get. It. We're just going to get on with the cutting, I guess. Let's crack on. So next steps, let's strip all the detail I don't want off of the chassis, take the whole chassis apart, have a little look around, see what we've got to play with. Um, we've got some voids there, but we are using those to locate this main engine mount which I think is still be useful to keep that in play. Um, they're still nicely detailed. I wonder what details I need to change. Some of that will be filled and painted. Um, here is the end, here is before. Now I don't want to remove uh, the gear, so I've masked them with blue tack while I'm doing the actual physical work. Here's it all filed back. The lump taken off and we're taking about a millimeter off the side. I think we can check that with the old uh, calipers. Let's see. So this side is just over 0.5, and this side is 1.5. So we've taken almost a millimetre out of the side. Quick with a black primer, a, a metal etch to tidy everything up, put all the blue tack out, uh, and then start putting it back together again, and then start checking the tolerances. Yeah, happy with that. Right, so this, we need to take some some out of here. We need, obviously, we need, we've lowered this piece down, but I think we can take uh, possibly some more out of that because I really want to try and get this, this, this whole decoder and, and sugar cube set up nice and neat. So get rid of that thick stuff. We've got a little bit of black tape to make it nice and slim. Uh, see if we can't uh, tuck that back in. 
Sorry for the freelancing camera. Uh, I found that I was looking so closely, and here's the, the sugar cube sanded down, that my head was getting in the way of the camera shot. So we're going to do a culmination of this kind of, of footage and some still shots because the overhead stuff just wasn't working with my big shiny dome. Now, there you see the power bank is nicely tucked away. That will eventually be held in place by a bit of black tack. But we just now need to, I think we can go deeper into that so that we can get that further in. Because when I line up with this, <clears throat> it looks like it might clash with the end of the motor and the connectors that come out the back of that motor. So and then here's a sanded down sugar cube. Let's just see if we've got the height right. Yeah, that works for me because we've got a little bit of a, uh, a drop in the frame on the chassis, so that sh if, we, if we're a fraction deeper, then it shouldn't be an issue. But probably won't harm to do a bit of a dry run. Um, yeah, I want to move it further forward, so I think I need to cut more out of the actual chassis. Right, so this is the chassis. We're going to cut this area out here. There you go. We've taken a whole bunch more. So now... When we actually put the uh, power bank and sugar cube, they go all the way to the front of the boiler door, giving us more space. I've also taken a groove out of this, out of the hump. I think I probably take, I might need to take more of that. This is for running the cables to the cab area. Okay. Um, let's pop that in. Tum -ti tum. Yeah, much it's much further forward. It's about three or four mil further forward now. The cable will run through there, nice and easy. Obviously they need to be reduced in length, and that will be glued down. Taking a little bit more off the back of the sugar cube speaker. Uh, well, that needs to be rewired as well, so that the cables uh, are easier to run from it. So we'll, we'll should be doing some more soldering at some point. Yeah, that fits nice and forward. Should give us a bit of a gap this time when we look from the side. Yeah. That's good. Like that. And the sugar cube obviously goes in there. Sticks in place like that. And that should sit nicely. Let's just tuck that away. So you can see we have to organise that cable a bit. Um, and we'll pull those cables out of the way, but I want to see if we can do a little dry run, see if that actually fits. Well, here goes. Let's see if we can locate that on there. Yep. Happy with that. Moving on to... Well, yeah. That was it's neat. Obviously... I need to resolder the sugar cube so you don't see the cable through the, the side. And obviously, both cables need to be reduced quite considerably. This hatched area is where I reckon we need to cut this out so that we can fit the HM7000. And we're going to need to have... It's going to cover the doorway. So I have to have a blank for a doorway because we need those two sockets. It's the bane of these chips having those sockets coming out the side i wish they put them in a different direction that way they would go in other locos you know here it is all cut out and we've saved a little bit of meat there for the ball to fix up against and um, i do need to take more of that out but everything else is pretty much trimmed as we want it We'll give a bit of a demo. It doesn't go in that way, does it? This way, there you go. So the decoder will sit in the tank like that. There you go. Just needs a little bit of clever model making to hide it. <laughs> so that will get glued in place. Won't be glued to the chip, obviously. That's all going to come in the next video. And then that little doorway... 
flanking piece will go in there as well. And then in front of the actual plugs, I think I'll have a couple. I'll have a, uh, a, uh, a driver or engineer uh, head and shoulders leaning out to blank those off uh, to distract the uh, detract the eye. Right, let's go for the um, let's go for a full kit dry dry run. So if we can't get it all in, this is going to give me a good idea of what I need to do with the cabling. Right, so she's all in. Yep, everything we need is all where I want it. Obviously we need to tidy up the cable runs, get rid of all this excess cable, and make sure everything's sitting nice and straight and in its correct place. So it looks nice and tidy and deliberate and not all pony. Right, off camera we reduce these in length, so basically about five centimeters for both this and the sugar cube. Sugar cube, we tied it up so one leg was longer than the other, so it wasn't coming, so it's coming from one end. Here is the four pin uh, connector that joins the tender to an A4. Uh, um, I thought I would use this so I can separate my system. Um, you only need the four pins that's the two for the motor, two for the track. It's really simple stuff. Time for a test run. Uh, back to the still shots, uh, we've taken a little bit more at the, the far corner and also at the hump. Uh, I'm using tack black, uh, spray the inside of the, the model black. Now this stuff is good for a temperature range as well, it never dries up, so it's really useful for this sort of thing. Here we go, start sticking it all in place. And here is the finished loaded item. You can see the cables are all tucked away, <coughs> out of the way by the black tack. And also there's the connector, the four pin connector, that we're gonna to use to link the whole thing together. Uh, speaker and everything's all nice and straight. Um, and we've got uh, plenty of model making space around that seven pin. Um, looks neater from this side, obviously. Uh, here's the four pin plugged together. Now it's time to play. Right, well, hopefully uh, you found that of some use. Um, I'm particularly impressed with uh, with what uh, with what Peter's done with with this body, especially in its simplest form, where it has the little lugs that fit into the right connectors on the actual uh, Hornby chassis. So you can just screw this in, and then you can you can see how simple this is to actually get yourself another shunter. And it couldn't have been an easier one to do because you just need to spray it black, and then get some decals from Railtech. Um, more information for that will be in the next video, okay? Um, yeah, I think it's a cracking little loco. Um, and the 4F, the Fowler 4F sound file, I think suits it just fine. Um, you, you're never gonna get a 2F uh, sound profile because I don't think anyone's around to remember what they sounded like. Um, or if they are, certainly there's no possibility of recording it because they all were gone or out of service by 64. Um, now it's time for the obligatory like and subscribe. Um, sorry, 
like and subscribe. There you go. Um, now, more than 50% of you who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. Okay. Now, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, the one thing it do doesn't make me any money. What it does is it pushes the algorithm out there so that this more positive TT120 content is more visible, uh, or at least has a, has a fighting chance with the people with thousands and thousands of subscribers um, who sometimes are a little bit negative about our scale. So um, it's up to you, but it would be a big help, not just to me, but to everybody else out there who really cares about TT120. All right. Um, so, uh, if, if it, by the way, I'm going to be at um, the NEC at the Key Model World. Um, this new extravaganza of railway modelling and scale modelling and everything in between. Um, uh, hopefully, um, Jenny will have managed to uh, pull uh, Craig Ironhorse out of the sand pit <clears throat> with the diggers, which I know they're going to on Saturday. Um, I'll be there on the Sunday. Uh, I'll check the sand pit just in case Craig's still in there playing away. Uh, but uh, if you see me, uh, if you're going to the show and you see me there, come and say hello. Um, or I'll be standing on ceremony. Just come and say hi. You know, um, If you hate me, then you don't have to. But if you like what I'm doing, just come and say hello. Brilliant. All right, um, everyone, take care. Uh, see you soon. Cheerio, bye. Detriments, you call this? Detriments? Well, I want to remind you it was detriments like us that built this bloody empire and the is out of the bloody Raj. That's on. About to.